Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at building this simple title effect for Final Cut. And it's going to make use of the difference blend mode. And before we start, I wanted to say a few words about the difference blend mode. And I'm sure you've looked at this menu of blend modes and wondered what a lot of them are about. But in actual fact, they can all be fairly simply explained if you dive into the maths of them. And that's what I'm going to do with difference. I'm going to explain how the numbers actually work. So to explain difference, I've got two rectangles here. The darker one is 25% grey in the background, and the one in the foreground, the rounded corner one, is 75% grey. And currently we've got the blend mode set to normal. Now, difference is really just a special form of the subtract mode. So let's look at what happens if we subtract one from the other. And you'll see that the area of the intersection is now black. Let's look at the numbers for why that is. So here we go. Our foreground value is 0.75. Our background value is 0.25. We subtract uh, the foreground from the background and we get negative 0.5. And that translates in motion to black, because we can't see anything below black. But what difference does is something slightly different. So let's have a look at the difference. And you'll see that now the intersection is a kind of 50% grey. So why is that? Well, what difference does is it uses the abs function to re always return a positive value. Now, you remember that we had negative 0.5 as our subtract. Uh, but if we use subtract with the abs function, we always get a positive value. So that negative 0.5 becomes positive 0.5. And that's why we get this mid gray as a result. And that turns out to be very handy. As you can see from this example, so in the background, I've got my concentric circles. And in the foreground, I've got this plain white rectangle. So if we were to select subtract, Again, we just get a black hole there because we're subtracting one from those other numbers and we get zero. But if we select difference, it's much more interesting. Everything that was black becomes white and everything that was white becomes black. So if we look at the numbers for that very quickly, subtracting one from zero obviously gives you negative one. But if you use the abs function, it gives you positive one, and that's why black is flipping to white. But if we start thinking about the background pixels that are white, so change that to one, both functions return zero. And that's why we're getting this nice effect here. And that's what we're going to be using for our title effect. So let's take a look at that. So as usual, let's start by checking on our project setup. This time I've gone for a 4K Ultra HD project, 3840 by 2160, and frame rate 24, and a duration of three seconds. So I'm going to first of all select the rectangle tool, and then I'm just roughly going to draw a rectangle. I'm going to center it up, I'm going to come over and turn on fill. The outline I'm going to go for 20. So both of these want to be white, make sure the color is white, that outline isn't. Uh, this fill is now white. And you might also want to just switch the joint to square like so. So then I'm going to set up its geometry, size 1920, and height 540. And then I'm going to duplicate that rectangle, and I'm going to make the height of this duplicate 270, and I'm going to make its fill black, and I'm going to turn off its outline. And then I'm going to just move it down on Y, negative 135. And the next thing we're going to do is to create some text. So I'm going to select the text tool and I'm going to type some text. So I've typed my text like that. I'm going to center it up. Uh, let's make it larger. In fact, I think I'm going to go for size of 200. The size will depend on your actual uh, font choice. I'm going to come over to Properties. I'm going to center up the position. And then let's look at the blend mode for the text and switch that to Difference. 
And you can see immediately that they, the white text against the white box has actually turned black. And this is the effect that we're looking for. So I'm just going to select the text and set the baseline so that top line is sitting where I want it to. So I'm going to bring it up like that. I think a baseline shift of 50 is going to be correct in this instance. And then I actually want these two lines of text to be animating separately or in contrary directions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate them. And one of them is going to be the top line only. And the other is going to be the bottom line only. And it's fine that they're sitting over the top of each other because what I'm going to do with the bottom line is I'm going to link its Y position to the top line. So come to properties and open up the position, select the Y, add parameter behavior link, use the top line as the source and set the scale to negative one. And then we're just going to adjust that Y offset so that's sitting down in the bottom box. And I think 270 is going to be exactly right. So then what we can do is we can animate the top line, as you see, like so, and the bottom line moves in a contrary direction. So let's actually just set up that animation now. I'm going to come to 12 frames on the timeline. I'm going to set a keyframe for the Y. So I want the top line to come from the bottom and the bottom line to come from the top. So I'm just going to position them just slightly outside there. So that's uh, negative 520 in this case is going to be good. And I'm going to come forward to 24 frames and set that Y position to zero. And the animation is now going to work like so. Now, when they're outside the box, I want them to be masked. So I'm going to actually apply a mask to the group. So come down and select the rectangle mask, roughly draw a rectangle mask like that. Make sure to center it up, come over to the mask size. Now we want this to be slightly larger than our 1920 by 540. So we're going to go to 1940 and 560. So that's just going to take account of that outline that we've got. So now you can see that our text kind of appears only inside the box. So let's also animate the appearance of the box. And to do that, we're going to use the rectangular mask. So first of all, I want to adjust its position. So its X position, I'm going to set to negative 960 and its X anchor point, I'm also going to set to negative 960. And the consequence of that is that when I animate the X scale, it's going to animate in from the, the side like so. So I'm going to come to the first frame, set the X scale to zero, set a keyframe. I'm going to come forward to 12 frames and set that X scale up to 100. So now we get this nice little effect here. So then let's animate everything off. So I'm going to come to, I think, 55 frames, let's say. Select that top line of text, hit a keyframe. Let's come forward. 10 frames to 65. And let's do the opposite here. So again, that moves out. So negative 520. And then let's animate the mask. And this time, let's just animate its Y scale. So I'm going to hit a Y scale keyframe there at 100, come to the last frame and set that Y scale down to zero. And the overall effect is going to look like this. So then if we wanted some color, we could add to this group a colorize filter. So color, colorize. Just need to make sure to set that black remap to actual black. So it's a little bit red, in fact. And then uh, we can remap the white to whatever color we choose. And that'll affect everything. But I'm actually going to set the default to be white. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a motion title. So we can come down and convert project to title. And where it asks us for the title source, we want to select new placeholder and convert. And you'll see that it's put a title background layer behind everything. And that's good. So I'd just like to point out that with our text group here, uh, we can do some fun things with the blend mode and we're going to be publishing that. So this is the normal um, option. But if we switch to screen, 
you'll see that the white remains are all white, but the black becomes see-through. So the black of the text is see-through and the black of the black box is see-through. So that's a nice effect. And the other interesting one we can use is the one called Silhouette Luma. And you see now we've got the opposite effect. So let's just leave that as normal and let's just publish that blend mode. So publish that. And we can also, I think, publish that colorize. We don't need to publish the remap black, so we can just publish the white and we can come over and let's call that color. Okay, so the other thing we need to do is we need to set up some markers. So I'm going to right click on the timeline here and choose add marker uh, at frame 24, which is where our intro animation ends. And I'm going to come to frame 55, which is where our outro animation begins. Right click, add marker, and then right click, edit marker. So this one, the second one, I'm going to set to build out mandatory. I'm going to skip back to the first one and set that one to build in mandatory. Press OK. And you can see now we've got that range in the middle that can be stretched as required, but our intro and outro animation will be protected. So then all we remains to do is to save this. Bear in mind we've turned it into a template and I'm going to call this difference text. So then when I launch Final Cut, I can come over to my titles and I can look for my difference text that we've just created and bring that in. And it looks like that. And we've got our blend mode. So as you see, we can switch to screen and that gives us that effect. And we can switch to Silhouette Luma. It gives us the, the opposite. We can switch back to normal and we can change the color like so. Now, the only other thing we need to do is we need to publish the position and the scale of the group so we can move it around. So let's do, do that. So back in motion, let's select the group, come over to properties. Let's make sure to close up position and scale because that's going to affect how they get published. Uh, and we want them to look neat like this and not opened up. So first of all, I'm going to publish the position and then I'm going to publish the scale. Come over to verify that we've actually done that. That looks good. So we can save that again. And back in Final Cut, we've now got position control. And we can put it up there if we want. And scale control. Which we can scale to taste. And we can also do our, our blend mode thing. Uh, bearing in mind that the color is going to affect how those blend modes work. So. Um, if we actually want this to be working the way we want it to, we actually need to set that to white and similarly with screen. If the colour is anything other than white, um, it's going to start to be see-through, as you can see. Uh, and you might want that effect, but uh, if you don't, make sure that the colour is, is white. And just finally, the other blend mode that you want, might want to experiment with is multiply. And that gives you this interesting effect. So the white becomes see-through and the black stays black. So we've got a see-through text at the bottom here. So quite a few options within this basic effect. Anyway, I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope to see you again on the next one.